What's up? This is T Briz from Briz Beats and T Briz Rock Instrumentals. I'm going to do a quick video on how to use Fruity Send to add reverb to any audio track that you have in your project. I'm also going to talk about the advantages to doing it like this. So first we need some audio to add reverb to. I'm just going to use this drum loop here. Let me open my pattern and let me just drag the drum loop right in. There we go. And also let's change the tempo. Ninety sounds good. We'll quickly move this to insert one. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do it like this: right click, channel routing, route select the channels to this track, just so it matches the color and the name of the channel that we have up there. On this insert, I'm gonna add to the mixer slot one, fruity send. Okay, it comes up. It has an option to send to none or to master because that's what we're routed to right now. We're routed to the master or nothing, but we want to take this and actually. Let's click right here, and now we're also routing it to insert two. Let's call this reverb. All right, good. Now you'll see in our fruity send that we have another option. We have the reverb insert that we just created and routed our insert to. Let's select that. Now when I play this, what's happening is fruity send is sending the audio signal that's coming in to insert one pre-fader also to insert two. What pre-fader means is it sends the signal before this volume changes. So if I were to play this and pull this volume all the way down, it's still going to make its way to the reverb track. Watch, this volume's all the way down, and if I play it, see it still comes out over there? It's disconnected from this fader now. That's called pre-fader. If I were to turn this back up, both of these tracks would be playing the same audio from the drums. And you can see how loud that actually is right now. Let me also show you the difference between pre-fader and post-fader. If I were to also route this track to insert three, this is a post-fader route. Because I don't have fruity send in the middle of it routing to three, I'm just straight routing one all the way over to three. So that means whatever happens on one also happens on three. Let's mute this one. If I lower the volume on one, the volume on three is gonna get lowered. Let's watch that. See this? Look at that, now nothing's going to three because my fader is down and this is a post fader route. That's what Fruity Send sends pre fader and the default behavior is to send it post fader. The other thing is if I were to add effects to insert one, if I were to add anything else to insert one, it would all come over to insert three and it would be duplicated. So for what we're doing today with Fruity Send, we don't wanna do post fader, we wanna do pre fader. So let's unroute that, turn our reverb back on. Let's turn this volume back up. Let's go to the reverb insert and add our reverb. I'm gonna go ahead and use Valhalla Vintage Vintage verb. Our reverb insert has Valhalla Vintage Verb on it, and here's the key. The mix knob is turned all the way up. That is telling that this insert, that all we want to hear is what's called the wet signal, 100% of the reverb signal. We don't want the dry sound of the drums on insert two. All we want is the reverb only on insert two. So your mix knob has to be all the way up. No matter what reverb plugin you use here, here I'll show you another example really quick. If I were to use the stock one, stock plugin from FL Studio. If I were to use this one, it actually has a fader on here for the dry signal, which we would have to turn that all the way down and then turn the wet all the way up. So only the wet signal or the reverb would be on insert two. Otherwise we'd be playing some of the dry signal too. And we don't want that. We just want this track to be just the reverb. I'm going to close this one out. I'll just turn it off for now. Let's play it with some of the reverb. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, how about we do this? Uh, this is where having your own dedicated reverb fader on your insert is helpful because we can control the volume of the reverb separately from the volume of the dry track and blend it in. So let's turn it all the way down first. All dry signal. And we can slowly bring some reverb in until it's where we want it. That sounds pretty good. And you can hear that reverb fading out at the end there. Now I can do other things with my reverb. Like for me, I would probably add some EQ and filter off some of the low end of that reverb. Let's hear what that sounds like. Less rumbly. If I turn the EQ off. I have headphones on so I can hear that there's a thump to the reverb when I have this EQ turned off. I want it on. I want to take the thump. I don't want the reverb to thump. I want the drums to thump and the reverb not to be as deep. Maybe you want it thumpy. Don't put an EQ on it. Just another example of something we could do with this. You have complete control over your reverb. If you want your reverb to just be playing out of the left side or pan a little bit left, you can pan the reverb now. You can put it to the left. You can put it to the right. And this Fruity Send isn't just for reverb. It's for any 
thing that you want to send pre-fader, it's great for blending things together. Let's say you had a guitar track here, your dry guitar sound, your audio signal would be coming through here. You could play that and then you could add effects, phaser, chorus, reverb, delay, whatever you want. And using Fruity Send, you could control the effects levels from another insert the same way we did it with the reverb here. The other thing to pay attention to in Fruity Send is, you know, I showed you his pre-fader. And if I turn this all the way down, we still get a signal of those drums coming through here, but we can turn that signal down that comes into insert two by using this volume knob. So let's turn that down. See if I were to turn this all the way down, we've got no signal. Nothing's coming through insert two now. We're sending that pre-fader signal volume here. So we can turn that, we can tweak that. I'm going to add another instrument track here really quick, just, just to show you another trick that can be done with this dedicated reverb insert that we have here using Fruity Send. Let's just add a quick piano track. Okay, so I added a piano. I used the Maverick, Dirty Old Grand, default settings, just in case you're interested. We're going to take that piano. Let me change this to all so we can also see our audio up here. I'm going to select just the piano. I'm going to right click, channel routing, route selected channels to track. Now we got our piano. It's on a fader. Here's the piano by itself, and I'll show you the notes. Great. So now we're going to send this piano to the reverb insert as well. But what's happening here is we're sending the drums and the piano to the same reverb insert that we have set up for dedicated reverb. Using a trick like this can make the instruments that you route to that reverb sound like they're all being played in the same room together because they have a reverb track now sort of gluing them together. So let's set that up and see what it sounds like. Piano, slot one, fruity send. Let me close this. How about I route the piano over here? So I click on this insert. I route the piano there as well to the reverb track. Now it'll be in this list. Reverb. Great. The piano is going to the reverb now too. I could tweak the volume after the fact. Let's listen. You hear that? Everything's playing the reverb. But if I want to take the piano out of it, I could turn the volume down. If I turn the volume up, you're going to hear more of the piano and the reverb. Ready? really boost it so you can hear it cut through. Wherever we would want it, it's probably more right, like right around here. And you can see there's other stuff you can do here. You can take that pre-fader signal and you can pan it before it hits insert two. Also, there's this dry knob here. The level is set to 100% by default. I'm gonna be honest with you. I never touch this and I don't use this. And I read the online manual about this and it went a little bit over my head. <laughs> I think it's just beyond what I need to use this for because I use this for a very simple and basic purpose, which I showed today. If you get into some more complex setups with Fruity Send where you're sending sends and then your send track has another send track and it's like an inception of sends, like a send within a send within a send, then you probably have to start messing with this dry knob. Otherwise, what I say is just leave it alone. I don't even touch the thing. But anyway, that's it. That's Fruity Send. There's so much more I could go on and on with about Fruity Send but I think I'll just leave it there and I hope you guys got something out of this. Hit me down in the comments section to correct me if I said anything wrong, to make fun of me if you think I'm stupid, or even just to say hello and what's up in chat. Appreciate all the feedback I get. Please subscribe and like this video as well. That really helps my channel. Guys, have a good one. Peace out.